Hey guys, in this video we are going to be making a cardigan for my crochet doll. To do this we are going to be using a number 4 medium weight yarn and a 3.75 millimeter hook. To get started with this we are going to start with a chain of 26. And if you need to see how to do this or anything else in this video, there will be links for those videos in the description box below. If you like this channel and video, please give this a like and subscribe and leave me a comment to tell me what you think. There is always a link in the description box where you can find the written pattern for this pattern as well as other written patterns and more. And lastly, if you would like to see more of the behind the scenes stuff as well as art I don't make videos on, you can follow me on Instagram at the craftnet and you can also tag me there with the things that you guys make for my patterns because I'd love to see your guys' work too. So when you have a chain of 26, we will then single crochet into the second chain from the hook. So again, single crochet into the second chain from the hook. And then we are going to single crochet into each chain all the way across until you get to the end. When you have single crocheted all the way across that chain, you should have 25 single crochets. And this was the first row of the back panel of the cardigan for the dolls. And as I have said for the other clothing items that I've made for the dolls so far, I did make this size dependent on the size of the dolls that I have. And this is a good size for my smallest and biggest doll. But if you need to make this wider to fit your doll or shorter, again, to fit your doll, then you can of course do so. You can make your front and back panels whatever width you would like. Uh, again, this is 25 stitches wide and we are going to make our front panels 10 stitches wide. So that leaves us five stitches in between for the neck. So when you make your back and front panels, if you are changing the sizes, you will just want to make sure that you have enough room for both of your front panels and some space for your neck across the width of your back panel. So for row two, we are going to turn our work and we are going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we are going to single crochet into the same first stitch and single crochet into each stitch all the way across. And again, we are going to do that for this row, row two. And we are going to continue to do this for however many rows you need to, to make your back panel the length that you would like it to be. So I'm going to go on to work my back panel to be 35 rows long. So I'm going to go on to continue to do this same thing for this row, row two, through row 35. So again, I went on to work my back panel to be 35 rows long. And your work is going to want to, again, try to curl a little bit. And that is just because of the size of the hook with the size of the yarn. And that is completely normal. And now we will go on to work the front panels. For the front panels, we are going to start with a chain 11, which is going to be 10 stitches, like I said in the beginning. So if you changed the width for your back panel and you are also changing the width for your front panel, again, you will just want to make sure that the width for your front panel makes it so that you will have some room left over with both of your front panels sewn on with some space in between them for the neck. So with this chain of 11, we are going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook and then single crochet into the next stitch and each stitch all the way across. When you've made it across the first row of the front panel, you should have 10 single crochets again, unless you have changed that width. And we are going to do the same thing for the front panels as we did the back panels. 
So we are going to turn our work and chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we're going to single crochet into the same first stitch and single crochet into each stitch all the way across. And again, you are going to want to do that for this row, row two. And then you are going to want to repeat this for the same amount of rows that you did the back panel. So again, I worked my back panel to be 35 rows long and you will want to work your front panels to be the same length as your back panel. And again, just like the back panels, I went on to work my front panels to be 35 rows long, which you can see here. And again, it will try to turn a little bit. It's just how it is. And when you have finished off your first front panel, you will want to go on to make a second front panel exactly the same way. So you will want to have two 10 stitch wide by 35 row long front panels. Again, if you work them the same as I did. When you have the back panel and both front panels worked up, we are then going to make sure that the top of all of the panels are at the top. And then we are going to start sewing the front panels on to the back panel. So to do that, we are just going to take one of these and I'm going to use this string that I left at the top and I left this long enough so that I could use it for this. And we are just going to string a needle on here and we're going to whip stitch this onto the back panel. So we're going to start in this first stitch and go through the front and go through the front of the first stitch on the back panel and pull that through. And I like to go through these two stitches twice just to make sure that the end is secured. So again, all the way from the front to the back. And then we'll go through the next two stitches on the front panel and the back panel from the front to the back. And we're going to do this in each stitch until you get to the end of this first front panel. When you get to the end of that front panel, again, I went through those two stitches twice. So you will now tie this off and weave in the end of that. And then we are going to come to this next front panel. And again, I'm going to use this string that I left here at the end. And we are going to do the exact same thing that we did for the other one, starting from the other end of the panels. So we're going to flip this over and again, we're going to start from the front, even though the string is coming from the back. We're going to go through the first stitch on the front and the first stitch on the back from the front to the back. And go through those two stitches again. And then go through the next two stitches. and do that until you come to the end of the second front panel. When you have these shoulders sewn together, we are going to sew the sides together and leave an armhole. So you will want to leave your work inside out until you have this completely sewn together because it is easy to lose which side is the inside. And at this point, you may also notice that your front panels or your back panel may be longer. And that is completely normal. It's happened to me every single time. I don't know why with this small little cardigan, they don't turn out exactly the same size. But as long as you line it up here at the bottom and line your rows up as you go, it will just compensate up here at the top for you. So it is not a huge deal. So with this, we are going to start here at the bottom. My strings were too short to use to weave this together. So I sewed them in already and I am starting with a new string. So I'm going to tie these very two bottom stitches together. And then we are going to sew this together 
just like we sewed the shoulders together with a whip stitch. So we will again go through these same two stitches from the front to the back and I'm going to hold this tail down as we go. And then we're going to go through each row all the way up from the front to the back, loop stitching this together. And you will want to whip stitch 19 rows together, leaving 16 rows for the armhole. So again, you'll want to weave together 19 rows, leaving 16 rows for the armhole here at the top. And when you have done this first side, you'll want to finish it off up here and come to the other side and do the exact same thing. Again, leaving 16 rows for the armhole. When you have everything sewn together, this is what your work should be looking like. And we are now going to turn our work right side out so that our seams are on the inside. And we are going to work a border around the outside of our work. So to do this, we are going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And you are going to want to slip stitch into any stitch on the bottom back of your cardigan. So again, slip stitch onto any stitch. And then we are going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch, and single crochet into the same first stitch. And then we are going to work one single crochet into each stitch along the bottom until you come to this corner stitch. When you've come to this very corner stitch, if you've already worked a single crochet into it, that is fine. You will just work two more single crochets into that same stitch. And if you have not worked a single crochet into that last stitch yet, you will want to work three single crochets into that stitch, which is the corner stitch. And now we are going to go on to work one single crochet in the side of each stitch all the way up the side of this first front panel until we come to the top where it connects to the back panel where you will work one single crochet in each stitch across the top of the back panel. And then we are going to work one single crochet into the side of each stitch down the side of the second front panel until you come to the corner where you will again work three single crochets into this corner stitch and then continue working one single crochet into each stitch across the bottom back until you come back to the beginning single crochet. When you've made it back to the beginning single crochet of the border, we will then slip stitch into the top of that beginning single crochet. And that is the end of round one of the border. And you can finish it off there if you would like, but I'm going to go on to work one more round around this. So for our second round, we are going to chain one and single crochet into the same first stitch. And we are going to work one single crochet into each stitch until you come to the middle stitch of the three on the corner. And we are going to do the same thing for this round that we did for the last round. So when you come to this middle stitch of the three in the corner, you will work three single crochets into the middle of the three and then continue working one single crochet into each stitch all the way around until you come to the next corner where you will work three single crochets into the middle single crochet of the three in the corner from the last round. And then you will continue working one single crochet into each stitch all the way around until you get back to the beginning single crochet of this round. And when you have come back to that beginning single crochet of the second round of the border, you will want to slip stitch into the top of the beginning single crochet of the round. And I'm going to finish off my border here. But if you would like to continue making rounds around this border, 
you can go ahead and do so as many times as you would like doing it the same way that we just did the second round when you have finished working the border around your cardigan, we are going to go on to make the sleeves. The sleeves do not have to be very long, as you can see, so they look a little funny, but they do fit the doll. And of course, you can make your sleeve as long or short as you would like. So to make the sleeve, we are going to start with a slip knot on our hook. And we're going to come to the back of the cardigan and we are going to slip stitch into any stitch on the back of the cardigan. So again, slip stitch into any stitch. And then we are going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we are going to single crochet into the same first stitch. And we're going to start working single crochets on, into the side of each stitch all the way around this armhole. And you are going to want to bring a couple of stitches together around the armhole. That way your sleeve is not wavy where it connects to your cardigan right here. If you were to work, just work one single crochet in each stitch all the way around the armhole, it would make it so that there are too many stitches. So again, you'll want to continue working one single crochet into the side of each stitch all the way around the armhole bringing a couple of stitches together every once in a while so that your sleeve is not wavy or connects to your cardigan. And I'm going to work my sleeve down to 30 stitches around the armhole. When you've made it all the way around your armhole and you've come back to that beginning single crochet that we worked, you will then want to slip stitch into the top of that beginning single crochet of the round. And that was the first round of the sleeve. And again, I worked mine down to 30 stitches all the way around. So now for the second round, we are going to chain one, which does not count as a stitch. And we're going to single crochet into the same first stitch. And we're going to work one single crochet into each stitch all the way around this round. And when you make it all the way around, you'll want to slip stitch into the top of this beginning single crochet of the round. And again, this was round two. So you'll want to go on to continue working one single crochet in each stitch all the way around for as many rounds as you would like until you get the length for your sleeve that you would like. If you do not want your sleeve to be one width, all the way down. You can of course start bringing more stitches together throughout the rounds of your sleeve to make it so that your sleeve gets smaller towards your hand like this if you would like. And I will put here on the screen how I worked my sleeve that you see here. So again here is how I worked my sleeve subtracting two stitches every other round for a few rounds with rounds of one single crochet in each stitch all the way around in between those rounds until I came down to a good size and then continued those rounds until I was comfortable with the length of the sleeve. You can work your sleeves the exact same way that I did if you would like, but you do not have to. And of course, you can make it longer or shorter if you would like. This does not have to be a full on cardigan. It can be a short sleeve cardigan or you can leave it as just a vest. It is up to you. And when you finish off the first sleeve, you will of course want to finish it off and weave in your ends and then make the second sleeve the exact same way. And that's all there is to it. So I hope that that was helpful and enjoyable for you. If it was, please hit that sub like and bell button and leave me a comment to tell me what you think. I hope that you guys go on to create many more amazing things. And until next time guys, I'll see ya.